Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer and I'm HIV positive. This is a channel about me living my life with HIV. In today's video, we are going to unpack the top 10 reasons why you think that you have HIV. But Jennifer, you say, what if you give this top 10 list and somebody really does have HIV and they end up with AIDS and it's all your fault? Disclaimer, I am not a doctor, never claim to be one. You are all responsible for your own bodies. This video is intended to shed some light and insight for those that always seem to think that they have HIV or that they're gonna get it. So I'm just gonna share with you guys what I've observed over the last four plus years of HIV advocacy. It's what I see over and over and over again. It's a total pattern. So these are people that did not encounter high risk exposures. High risk, what is high risk you say? High risk is two men having sex together and high risk is sharing needles for drugs. And if you've had sex with somebody who had done either of those things, that's high risk. And for some reason, the people that suffer most from HIV anxiety are the ones who are at the lowest risk. Hetero males, I'm talking to you. You guys are the ones that freak out the most. Have you looked at the statistics lately? Look at them. Hetero males are lumped in with heterosexuals altogether. That means women too. So when you go and you look even further who those hetero males are, they aren't necessarily hetero males. You can always check off the box for hetero male. Yes, I have a wife, I have kids, I go to church. But what is your sexual orientation? Is that checked off correctly? It doesn't always appear that way statistically. In fact, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say the shame of revealing that you're gay is actually worse than revealing that you have HIV. So when a hetero male gets HIV, who are they gonna blame it on? A female, of course. It always turns out to be a female that they met at a party that they never saw again. I don't know, I slept with so many women, I don't know who it was. I don't know, it was some sex worker that I was with. No one seems to actually know who they got it from. But it's the other way around when it's a female and they get it, they always seem to know who it came from. Why is that? Why do we always seem to know who it came from? But let's think about it. I've talked about this in many of my videos. I had a viral load of 507,000. I had AIDS. My husband was exposed to me for a year without condoms and he's negative. No, he does not have some special gene that kept him from getting HIV. I had another boyfriend for five months. No condoms, he's negative. I see this pattern over and over through advocacy with women who have HIV. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it's really, really unlikely for a man to get it from a woman. If you wanna watch my video about the unlikelihood of a female transmitting, just watch this video right here. Okay, let's get to our top 10 list of the reasons why you think you have HIV. Number 10, a lot of people are self-admitted hypochondriacs. They say it in their messages to me. They say, I have anxiety, I suffer from hypochondria, and I am concerned all the time about health issues. I don't know what else to say about that. That's self-explanatory. Number nine, you had an affair and you feel guilty. You think you deserve HIV. Guess what? HIV does not give two poops about you having an affair. It does not have a moral compass. It does not work that way at all. Number eight, you are with a sex worker. Please don't call them whores or prostitutes. Sex worker, thank you. Like I've already explained, what's the difference between my vagina and a sex worker's vagina when I was really sick and had AIDS? What's the difference? And I still didn't pass it on. And I've seen that many times with lots of lots of women who are HIV positive. And the only reason I know about all these women who are HIV positive is because I have a YouTube channel and they found me through that. Otherwise, I don't think I'd ever know these women ever. It is so hard to find a woman with HIV. Okay, let's think about who's seen a female sex worker. And I've already told you hetero males are the least likely to have HIV. So if you're a bisexual man, you're probably gonna see women in the normal world, but what are you gonna wanna do when you have sex with men? That's gonna be a secret thing. If you're a bisexual male, are you gonna see a female sex worker? More than likely, no. You're gonna see a man if you're bisexual because in society, it's acceptable for you to be in a heterosexual relationship with a woman, so that's easy. But if you're bisexual and you wanna do something that's sort of against what society deems normal or okay, you're gonna do that in private. And so you're probably, if you're a man and you're bisexual, your sexual experiences with men will probably be done in private or secret or with a sex worker but not a female one because you can just do that in your regular life. And if you're a gay man, are you gonna go to a female sex worker? No, that doesn't make any sense. So who's seen female sex workers? Hetero males. True hetero males are the ones who are least likely to have HIV. Number seven, you have symptoms. 
HIV symptoms are associated with a million other things. A sore throat, that does not mean you have HIV. Stomach problems, that does not mean you have HIV. Thrush on your tongue, I don't think a lot of people really even understand what thrush is. They think if they have a little white on their tongue that that's thrush. Look up leukoplakia. Also, did you know that nasal sprays cause a little bit of thrush on the back of your tongue? It's not HIV. Even a swollen lymph node doesn't necessarily mean HIV. I took my daughter into the doctor for a swollen lymph node in her armpit. They told her it was nothing. When I had a swollen lymph node in my neck, the ear, nose, and throat doctor said it was nothing. Turned out to be something, but I know what happened to me was very, 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 very uncommon. I'm that zebra, okay? That's why I wasn't diagnosed. Number six, you think you had a risky exposure. Hetero males will come to me and say they've been with a sex worker, even with a condom, and they still think they got it. Some girl they were with with an unknown status that they've badgered a million times to ask her if she has HIV, and, she, and then because she's so offended that you keep asking, she blocks you, and now you think even more that she has it because she's hiding some big secret. No, people get tired of people asking people if they have HIV, it's kind of annoying. I'm not trying to be mean, I'm not. Number five, you gave or received oral sex. Again, this is typically hetero males. People don't understand how it's transmitted. You can receive oral sex all day long. It's not gonna go from someone's mouth into your penis. It's not gonna go from someone's mouth into your vagina. That's not how it happens. The only possible way you can get it orally and you have some kind of big open wound in your mouth, they say bleeding gums, I have to say, I still do not know anybody who's contracted HIV through oral sex, but they say bleeding gums, but even the CDC says extremely rare. So you would have to be the receiver of semen in your mouth. You'd have to have some big bleeding open wound. Your mouth itself can't absorb the virus. There has to be an open mucous membrane. There has to be access to your bloodstream, but really, truly in reality, this is not how it's transmitted. Number four, you Googled HIV. Stop doing that. You'll drive yourself crazy. Number three. You seem to think that women are transmitting HIV. Again, statistically, look it up. Look who's transmitting HIV, it's not women. We get it from men, we get it from bisexual men, we get it from men who shared needles for drugs. Are we getting it from hetero males? True hetero males? More than likely, no. Again, if you want more information about that, I'll attach my video at the end of this video, okay? Number two, window periods. You think, for some reason, that you're gonna be this unlucky person who's going to have a positive test show up a year after the fact. That's not a thing. Most tests are accurate within two weeks to one month after the exposure. There's antigen tests and there's antibody tests that you can take in the beginning. I will include a link in my description so you can look at window periods and tests that are available. But basically, if you've tested negative after one month, more than likely, that's gonna be super accurate. I've never seen anyone through all of my advocacy test positive after they were a negative at four weeks. I've never seen that turn around later and then become positive at three months, not once in four years. And the number one reason you think you have HIV, you took an HIV test. Somehow now you think that you're supposed to have HIV because your name is associated with an HIV test. And you went to a clinic and they said it was okay for you to take a test. Well, of course they did. It's a business. They don't know what your exposure was. They're gonna say yes every single time. You could have kissed somebody and think you got HIV and you wanna take a test. They're gonna say yes, take a test, sure. Companies make money off your testing. No one's going to explain risk to you. So in your head, you're now thinking, I'm somebody who's taking a test for HIV. So it's very, very possible now that it's gonna turn out positive. I'm in this world of HIV. My name is surrounded in this world of HIV. I'm waiting for an HIV test. <laughs> with my name on it. Oh my God, my world's going to come to a crashing halt if my name is associated with those three letters. And that's all you can think about. And you lose sleep over it, and then you start Googling symptoms, and then you think about it 24 seven, and you can't eat, and you have a stomach ache, and you lose weight, and you have headaches, and oh my God, it must be HIV. You see where I'm going here? But I'm not saying don't test, obviously test. It's always good to test, but just know that when you test, you're probably gonna start thinking about HIV even more. It's gonna make you feel in some way that you're now associated with the virus, but that doesn't mean that you're going to have it. And I can't tell you how many people get back to me and tell me it was negative, Jennifer. I can't believe it, it was negative. Do you think I should test again? I don't know, knock your socks off. Test every day of the week.
Okay guys, that is all for this video. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you're doing well. Definitely test for HIV, but keep in mind some of the things I've shared in this video if you're dealing with anxiety and I hope it helps, I really do. Stay safe, wear a condom, know your status, know your partner's status, and enjoy that oral sex. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.